Hey guys, uh, Illy here, and I just wanted to, I just got home, I have briefly read through the patch notes here, and I just wanted to go over uh, CB 0.22 patch notes release the Kraken for Hand of the Gods here. Alright, so, to preface this, the Discord has been exploding for the past mm, two or three days. Because Adonis has leaked us a couple of spoilers concerning the patch. And a lot of those spoilers went over very negatively. <laughs> and a lot of people, myself included, have reservations about th what this patch entails. Um, to kind of explain that, I've pulled up my twit longer to reference um, this particular patch. And I'm also going to run through... The patch notes here from high res. Uh, I just want to start off with a pin message from Adonis here. Just uh, there's a solid chance we'll be patching today, blah 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 blah. When the patch is live, please reevaluate your feedback after playing for a few hours and send new feedback forward. It's much easier to evaluate feedback once players have played the game mode, which is very fair. So, with that in mind, let's go over this uh, this particular patch. What's new? Let's let's do let's do this first. Let's do general first. Core gameplay improvements. That that's debatable. Core gameplay changes. Um, they have made additional changes to the game board to make each decision more meaningful. Uh, leaders now truly command. Uh, basically, what they're saying is the leaders are no longer on the board. They have no impact other out, outside of their hero ability. And the two summoning stones have morphed into one with a plus five health buff. Which I think overall morphing the two stones into one with plus five health is perfectly fine. It nerfs cards like Annihilation that dealt six damage to face, which is disgusting. Um, and also nurse aggro just a little bit because you have to deal more damage which gives you more time to stabilize so I'm perfectly fine with plus five health on one target the biggest controversy has been leaders no longer on the board which is something that made this game very very special is that the leaders were not on the board uh, which is what a lot of the community members are concerned about um, there is a severe balance issue between ranged leaders and melee leaders, which they um, which they acknowledge. And there is also more balancing issues as far as mana cost of leaders to redeploy them, how you redeploy, something along those lines. So leaders made the game more complex, which is what we liked, uh, which is what the community enjoyed, because currently the game was fairly complex and this is just closed beta so you don't even have as many cards you don't have very many interactions that you have to realize but when this game fleshes out more the complexity level exponentially skyrockets which could be quite um, quite difficult from a developer's perspective and also a developer's perspective of we have to sell this game to people how do we sell this you know chess hearthstone hybrid with insanely like dota level you need a private coach to be able to play this game well complexity that's kind of tricky and that especially because this is i think seen as a secondary game for higher certainly smite is their primary game that's quite daunting and they're not a very large corporation so i can respect a reason to make the game more simplistic doesn't mean i have to like it i don't like it in general i preferred having the leaders on board that being said i have not played with the leaders not on board so i might reevaluate that this is just my initial impressions what do i predict will happen uh, when leaders come off the board i believe that basically one leader will become better than the others in a particular pantheon and from week 13 or 13 and 14 we already see a pretty stark polarization of one leader is minutely better 
and therefore the other leader sees no play at all. I'm looking at uh, Guan Yu Nua here, honestly, because Frey is broken. But Guan Yu sees tons of play, and Nua sees almost no play. And Nua is just a little bit worse. Not by much. You can still play her. She's like a tier 2 deck to a low tier 1 deck. Um, but she sees n almost no play because Guan Yu is just so much better. Now, I'm not going to go too, too in-depth on leaders off the board. If you would like to read more, check out the Twit Longer. That's where I'm going to leave that at. Uh, what's new? Bulwark, Roman. Your summoning stones cannot take more than four damage from a single source. Control Bologna. I asked for it. I asked for it when I did my items review. I said, give me Control Bologna. And that is a way to give me Control Bologna. Uh, however, there's a card like that. It's called um, Celestial Armor. And it's in Egypt. And nobody plays it. And it's better than that. So... Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't see Bulwark seeing any play. But we'll see. Gift of Moonin. Norse, three mana deal three. And draw a card. So this is better Magma Slam. Okay, Gift of Moonin was busted. <laughs> like completely busted. Now it's still busted, but it's slightly less busted. Now you don't draw like four cards. You just draw one, but you deal three damage with it as well. So it's okay. You can still keep this card in your deck. Don't freak out if you crafted it. Gunyir's Might. Two mana deal two. If it's the only card in your hand, deal three instead. This scares me, because this is deal three and this is deal two. If you run a two of, well, when you run a two of this, and if you run a two of, of this, that's six plus four is ten damage. 10 damage. 10 damage of removal. And it's not specified removal, which is what makes... Uh, I, I liked the specified removal of can it hit structures, can it hit leaders, can it hit units. This is just removal. Or you can do face damage. I, th I think Gunyir's Might would be better off just at first glance. Maybe this should be um, units only. Especially because, as we're going to see later, backstab has changed, so now it hits stones. So if you run two of backstab, you're dealing 16 damage to the summoning stones with six cards, which is a pretty good deal. And if you're running Norse Rush, a lot of times in old meta, you would just not have that like one or two damage of burst and you would just be sitting there you know just barely holding on while the opponent is building board and stabilizing this gives you a way around that which makes Norse Rush even better so we'll see maybe um, maybe Norse Rush won't be inadvertently buffed from this but I think this is a buff to Norse and I don't think Norse needs a buff because Freya ability from the summoning stone is it, it, like off the board, Freya ability off the board, like it's insanely good. It's insanely good. Two mana remove something from the game for a turn. Like, whoa, who thought up that ability? Um, and then Odin buff is going to be plus one, plus one. No, I'm running Freya every time. At least when Odin was on the board, you could buff the leader, which meant you didn't take return damage, so it was value plus an extra damage point, plus removal, plus damage is yay. Now Odin's going to be. <laughs> And Freya's going to be, woo! So, anyway. Reconstruct, Roman. Uh, deploy, deploy, not spawn or summon. So deploy, you get to choose where this is, like uh, old, um, old Cursed Hunter. You get to deploy three zero three 3 obelisks, which I assume are going to be classed as structures, and which I assume you can... Well, I mean, the, the tricky part with this is you, I'm assuming that you have to be able to summon on your side of the board. 
not just like in front of your stone. Because if you can only summon in front of your stone, this card is awful. Uh, but if you can use this to create a choke point by spawning it off from your stone, cool. I can see that. Um, Mercury, epic 3 mana 3-3 three, three, war cry. Randomly deal 1 damage 3 times. Okay, I know mayhem is not good, but if you attach mayhem to a 3 mana 3-3 three, three, and put it on a war cry, it's good. So Mercury, I think, needs to be 4 mana for that because that's that that's very, very strong, especially with the range nerf. The Kraken, Greek. It's a legendary. It's 4 mana to cast. And then it replaces your leader ability with the Kraken. Spend three mana and deal two damage in a two by two. Ooh. You face the Kraken. Uh, Eridar, Lord of the Burning. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> We're not playing Hearthstone. But no, th this is seriously that kind of feel where you, it's it's a Jaraxxus y kind of feel where you all of a sudden have an insane hero power, and then you just win the game. Especially because that's two damage in a two by two. So you can literally just ping their stone constantly, even if you can't hit anything on board. Which means you're spending three mana every turn, which means you only have seven mana. Which means, oh wait, how many cards are there that are above seven mana? Oh yeah, like two. So whew, that's super strong. We gotta watch that. Uh, however, it, it must be said that that is a horrible tempo loss in the first turn, and then you just get value gained. So, in a Grease Mirror, this card is insanely good. Maybe, you know, against Norse or something, you're hoping you never draw it. But in a Grease Mirror, this is insane. In a raw game, this is insane. Um, if you're playing against Guan Yu, it's probably not as relevant, but it's still pretty good. So, I mean, it's bad. Okay, insane, insane. So Kraken, I'm glad it's a legendary. Let's just put it that way. Okay. Um, now, here's another thing. Oh, yeah, we've removed a row from the game. So I was incorrect in my twit longer. I thought they had added two rows, but instead they have removed one. So I don't know how I feel about that. I like a larger board, personally. But it has to be said that since you don't have mobile frontline spawn points anymore, like on the enemy stone, Rush decks are going to be hurt, so I'm okay for now. We'll, we'll see how it plays. We'll see how well the Rush does. Uh, I think adding in the free damage spells to Rush decks is only going to buff them in the first place. Maybe this is a little nerf to counteract that. We'll see how it goes. Turn timer. I absolutely despise this change. I absolutely despise it. This is not a change that needed to happen. 90 seconds is fast enough. I would prefer 2 minutes. I would prefer 2 minutes to 3 minutes. On a turn I do not want to make a decision in 80 seconds there's even with the low number of cards in the game right now you cannot accurately think of interactions and potential cards and you can't count cards in the enemy's hand accurately you can't keep track of that stuff for tournament for tournament play this is awful for ranked play or casual play it's fine but for tournament tournament play, this is awful, and I really, really hope turn timer goes up, because 90 seconds is fast enough. I oppose the initial change to drop it down to 90 seconds. I'm going to oppose it now when they drop it down even further. Pack opening, cool, who cares? Speech bubbles, who cares? Effects, icon improvements, yay. That I'm sure it'll be buggy and glitchy, and spectator will hate it. Um, ranked will be temporarily disabled. That's okay, no one played it anyway. Uh, player names and icons cool happiness ranged units have had, had their attack range reduced from four to three um i have this one on my twit longer as well i think stoof put this the best um one important change to the uh, range of the ranged unit is that n that is no longer possible to protect them from a melee unit with a single obstacle if you want to be in range of melee unit you need to block three tiles to prevent the melee unit from getting to your ranged unit which is good, right? It's a little nerfed to range, which definitely needed it. And it does have huge implications. However, with the game board shrinking and with summoning points being harder to get to, I would like to see us be able to add some obstacles. And I would like to see ranged units have... I, I don't know if they have a viability issue right now. I think range is probably still going to be very strong, especially if you have to 
run down the entire field. Um, but we do have to be mindful of what Stu said, where now you have to block three squares to body block your ranged units, where before you could just block one, um, which is relevant. And I think ranged units need to be watched because they've been overbalanced for a while. This is nudging them in the right direction. We'll see how it goes. Annihilation ramped up the effects for this spell. Cool. It's You play it every time you get it. So, I mean, we want to look at and see it pretty. Anubis, kind of same deal, though he's a little more situational. Backstab now hits summoning stones. Like I said, was saying earlier, this is going to help Rush. Who wants to help Rush? Not this guy. Um, Banish no longer requires a target to be used, which I love. It means you can deal with Loki. <laughs> uh, you can banish uh, an area rather than a specific unit, which is a cool idea. Uh, I really quite like it. Beacon of Hope, reduced mana from four or from five to four. This is a good change now with the extra gods added and the fact that Beacon of Hope doesn't give you a war cry. Beacon of Hope was broken at four mana when abilities were in. So you would spawn them and then the next turn they would use an ability. But now if you spawn in an Athena, you don't auto win the game. So reducing it down one mana, you're losing the war cry effect, which means Beacon of Hope is perfectly fine at four mana. I think it's an excellent starter card and I'm glad to see it adjusted down. Bologna, ability now applies to all units that were played this turn instead of only after the ability was used. I don't like that. Maybe it's just because I like sequencing. Uh, but I think you should be punished if you did not have the forethought to count up your mana. However, it does make the game easier to use. And in some instances, you want to play a specific RNG card first and then see if you want to make a choice between a couple of other cards. Maybe a 3-mana card and a 2-mana card. Or you can use Bologna ability after you spawn your Sagittarius. Um, and you want to try to find a mercenary. Maybe you've got an outmaneuvered in hand. And if you Bologna ability the Sagittarius for value, now you can't play outmaneuvered. Now you can play the Sagittarius, don't spawn the mercenary, and then you can whip the air, use your hero power, and poof, now they have two more health. I, see, I can see how I can see both sides of the argument. We'll see how it plays out. I don't think it's going to be too impactful because most high-level players did it anyway. Uh, Blade Master now here's your Summoning Stone, which is fine. Um, you know, seven mana, uh, four seven with charge, heal three. Still going to run it in most late side decks or rush decks. Charge, however, might be less powerful now because if you can't spawn things into the enemy then charging it just gets there one turn faster and i don't know how relevant that's going to be bombard deal two damage if you control three or more units deal four instead this was the card that used to do hero damage now it's a just a board clear so with roman i can definitely see it because like i, like I was talking about with sagittarius right you can sagittarius for two units and boom, now you can maybe proc your Bombard. Um, so we'll, we'll watch that card as well. I'm, I'm glad to see Roman get a little more uh, specif specific removal that's you know less than a billion mana um, and isn't Reign of Arrows because Reign of Arrows is whoo, nuts. Book of the Dead, improved visual effects. It was already pretty pretty. Now it'll be more pretty pretty. Cataclysm, same with Banish. Good, it lets you deal with Lokis. Um, and I'm assuming they'll add more stealth minions to the game, so I like it. Charge, increase mana cost from 1 to 2. Thank goodness. Personally, old charge, like in, in uh, 0.21, probably should have been 3 mana. But like I was saying earlier, maybe now charge has less value because you can't spawn it on the enemy summoning stone. So we'll see what happens. Emperor's Health now applies your summoning stone. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I'll play it, but... It could be interesting in an in, a, in an Egyptian deck because um, you could think of it as you know early game Geb without the body. Fenway, increase attack from four to five, so now it's a five two with immune to spells, especially with leaders now removed from the board. This card's pretty pretty darn good. Beastwa got a buff. I want to watch Beastwa very carefully because that that's scary, especially since Chao Fang has a buff as well from four to five health from last patch. Chao Fang, Fenway, Beastwa, watch for it. Beastwa is scary. Um, although I will say, you know, with 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 Kraken and maybe with um, a little bit easier board clear, maybe she'll take a nerf. But I'm gonna watch Beastwa 
give her a couple of plays, see how it goes. Gem of Iso, reduce cost from 2 to 1. Fine. Gem of Iso might now see an auto-include in every deck. Because if you have to run the whole length of the pitch, the pitch, the game board, in order to do damage, Gem of Iso could be back. Heavenly, reduce cost from 1 to 0. Okay. We could see more. That I skipped over guard for a reason because it's a piece of crap card. Heavenly, reduce cost from 1 to 0. Same reason as Gem of Iso, might see some play. Zero mana is a little awkward, but I mean, it's better than one, so we'll see. Inferno Cannon, reduce increased health from two to three. I don't understand this. I'm going to be honest, I really don't. I think two health was fine, because you were playing, in, you were playing into Rain of Arrows. Um, although, since you can't spawn, maybe if, if you can't spawn as forward on this map, well, maybe then Inferno Cannon sees a nerf because it can't move. So, I'll watch that card, but to me that seems unnecessary. Mercenary is now based on your summoning stone, so if you bunch all of your units around your summoning stone and don't do anything for a while, then hey, cool, your mercenary got buffed. Uh, we're going to have to see exactly where the spawn points are. Scylla, health increase from 2 to 3. This is excellent. Scylla was having trouble killing things, and when she could kill things, she often died from them. So she was kind of useless. Not useless, but she turned into a 3-mana deal 2, or 3-mana deal 1, which isn't great. So I like to see that change there. Siphon Mine now deals damage to Summoning Stones. I still think it's an include in most spell Guan decks. Maybe not anymore in Beast Wah because you no longer have to remove an enemy leader. Sun Wukong, improved visual effects on the card, and hopefully fixed movement speed bugs, because Sun Wukong movement speed was jacked up. Okay, more bug fixes. My favorite section. Uh, mana Potion did not add mana if you would previously accumulated 10 mana on a turn. I like it. Um, that's going to add a little more versatility to the Mana Potion, though usually you're using it before 10 mana anyway. Fixed an issue where Sobex passive could proc when an Afro was linked to a full health target. Glad. Nox ability was not correctly setting range to melee, it was setting range to 1, which meant just in Cardinals and not adjacent. So now it'll set things to being adjacent. Nox is not good right now. Like before, Nox was, okay, I, I could see that, you know, we'll, we'll let it run in the tournament. It's a ranged Roman leader. I want to see it. Her passive is very interesting. And now you take her out of the equation, now it's just a bad hero power that got nerfed. And you don't even get a ranged leader to go along with it. So Nox is awful. Um, Nox ability needs needs looking at, in my opinion. Rat was... that That's not even the long and short of it. They would need a paragraph to explain how Rat was bugged. But Rat was indeed very bugged. Um, skull icon, I don't care. Spell damage. Spell damage is another one that's kind of jacked up. It it was pretty easy to abuse if you figured it out, so I'm glad that was changed. And the Loki thing where you couldn't attack your own... Like, if you had to teleport in, you wouldn't teleport the square you're standing in. So that's a good change as well. And hey, Rock can give me XP again. So I'm about to go check the game. Hope I don't rage quit seeing that I got zero XP from Ra for the last, you know, week that I played him. But... One can hope. One can hope. Either way, that's the uh, that's the patch notes here. Doesn't it's not the end of the world, you know. The the world is not ending. The game is still okay, but I really want to go check out some key points for the spawn points, and um, exactly how big this board is, what kind of decks we're looking at, and I want to check out how bad how good aggro is now. As well as play around with the Kraken. So I'm going to go touch the octopus. And hopefully I'll bring you some more gameplay footage. Either tomorrow morning or over the weekend. Depending on how busy I am. So anyway, I'll sign off for now. And um, can't wait to see how this patch goes. Because it's going to be rocky when it leads to the start.